All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me over Exchange uh, for Media Group. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's even better to not you know, have to ask the questions of am I audible, or am I on mute, or apologize for it, and all of that. It's great to be here in person. Uh, and uh, uh, deep respect, uh, Mr. Dhyag Rajan, for the phenomenal insights and the thought-provoking comments that you had on, on brand building. As a passionate brand builder myself, I, uh, I resonate with a lot of what you said on building brands versus driving tactical sales. And we at Procter & Gamble are fully committed, as you know, to uh, uh, building brands, and we hope to share a few of those learnings as well uh, today in our chat. Um, so. Uh, briefly about myself, uh, my name is Girish. Uh, I've been with PNG uh, for the last almost 16 years now. Um, as I try to fix the slides. Yeah, that's who I am. Um, so that's me. I passed out of IIM Ahmedabad in 2007, uh, and PNG is the only company I worked for. Uh, that's my wife, Divya, who works with Netflix. And uh, that's our son, uh, Shreyas, um, who was about 10 years old. Uh, and um, that uh, little thing is a movie that I had a chance to co-produce. It's on Amazon Prime. And that's a YouTube channel that I run on the, on the weekends, which talks about cinema uh, and passion for uh, cinema from the olden times. As you can see, I've had a chance um, to experience a variety of assignments uh, in PNG within India, as well as a few abroad. Um, I had an opportunity to work on our, our a diaper brand called Pampers at the time that we were launching it into India. Um, and I, I did that role. Also, I had a chance to work on our sanitary napkins brand, Whisper. Um, so did that for a few years as well, uh, a decade ago. Uh, then had a chance to work on a few more businesses across uh, APAC and Middle East and Africa. And I've been back in India uh, leading uh, brand operations for the past uh, couple of years um, uh, here in India. Again, uh, honor and privilege to be part of the group of speakers here and to be with you all today. And I hope to share um, a few thoughts on how we can uh, enable technology work harder for brand building um, as a brand builder uh, myself and, uh, and sort of also seek help uh, on how we can make that do even better. All right, um, so just to get started on a lighter note, um, I'm here to talk, reflect a little bit on change and all that's changed and, um, uh, and focus on um, how technology has really changed the way we brand builders um, do uh, our work. Uh, that was me a few years ago uh, when I was super proud of the BlackBerry phones that the office gave me, and it was a really cool thing back then, and sharing BlackBerry pins, and if somebody gave you their BlackBerry pin, that was a moment of pride, right? So I was that generation, and, and on the right is, uh, is not far into the future, right? I think this, half of this is already a reality today. Um, we, are, we are probably watching 10 times the amount of advertising that we used to watch uh, a decade ago. And that in itself is a question to ask when it, when it comes to Mr. Tyagrajan's point on building brands. You know, um, we were subject to, let's say, X amount of ads uh, a, a decade ago, and today that number is probably 10 times. Therefore, as a brand builder, what does it take to create quality advertising? What does it take as a brand builder to cut through the clutter and reach the right consumer in the right manner? I think these are all thought-provoking questions to, to ponder um, for us uh, in the industry. Um, a few numbers back it up. I think these slides may be a, a, a couple of weeks old, so these numbers may already be outdated by the time that we are talking today. But largely the point is that digital adoption is no longer the future, right? We are already here, and it's already here and now. Um, and uh, this, is already, this has been basically driven by a combination of factors, right? The fact that India has the lowest cost smartphones um, in, the, in the world, uh, or close to that. Uh, the fact that India by far has the lowest data costs in the world, and uh, the adoption that came with that. And we all know COVID pushed us forward um, you know, uh, many years as we skipped and accelerated on the path of, of digital adoption. I'm convinced that as, as 5G you know, gets bigger and, and as, as it gets wider adoption, this is only going to accelerate. But the larger point is this is a trend that is, that is here to stay and grow, unlike uh, Dalgona coffee or whatever, which came and went, and we don't know what that is anymore. Um, what doesn't change, though, uh, are some of the fundamentals uh, of brand building, right? We at PNG. You know, keep saying this often, and I think we should keep saying this often, 
that what really sets us apart or what really matters you know, as a business leader is really deep understanding of consumers. Right? And we believe at PNG and we keep saying consumer is boss and we truly, truly mean that. Um, what has changed in some ways for the better is the ability to understand consumers even better than what it was a decade ago. When I started the in, a, in the company, you know, a consumer would be defined as um, male, 30 years old, lives in the top six metros in the country, and that's kind of the basis for then media targeting and, and how we went and uh, served that consumer with the right advertising. And fast, fast forward to today, we're able to get a much deeper and much granular understanding of that consumer. Uh, looking at the person's shopping behaviors, looking at the person's media consumption habits, you know, durable ownership. Uh, I know, you know, this person is, um, uh, you know, a parent of a newborn kid, uh, owns a washing machine, uh, uh, has a, her own car, uh, reads ABC, you know, uh, articles online, purchases these kind of products online. So all these give her a much deeper and much more granular understanding of that consumer, which should hopefully then lead to the right advertising going to the right consumer at the right receptive uh, moments, right? And that's a kind of a win-win um, for all parties involved in this. So what I want to do in the next 10 minutes or so is to just share a few examples of how we try and bring that alive uh, at PNG, starting with the brand that's closest to my heart, which is Pampers, which I had the opportunity to work on for more than a decade. Um, it may seem pretty intuitive now. It may seem like there is no rocket science um, in any of this, and, and there is no rocket science in any of this, uh, for, so that we are all on the same page. But we did operate very differently, you know, even as recently as, a, as, as five, six years ago. Right? Now, what was the way in which we advertised to uh, our diaper brand to people who had babies? Uh, 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 five, six years ago, we would say, I want to reach you know, female, 25 to 35, you know, living in the top cities in India, blah, 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 and reach her on television. Right? That's how we define the job to be done. Um, and that's how all of our media dollars were invested. Right? Now, it's no, again, it's no um, you know, uh, surprise that 9 out of 10 people who are watching television probably don't have a baby in a diaperable you know, age group. Right? So, that's just millions and millions of media dollars that are reaching consumers who basically give us no revenue or, 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 or any short-term returns whatsoever. Right? So it took a smart brand manager in PNG to come and ask the question on, you know, can we leverage technology to make this sharper and to make this better? And today, you know, where we've moved to is a place where we say, you know, I want to reach parents. Right? You know, a few years ago, it used to be I want to reach moms. I think now we've evolved to a much better place in society, and we say, I want to reach parents. And we say, I want to go and understand leveraging te technology and leveraging signals that I get from across my first party data as well as our technology partners. How do I go spend all of my media investments on a baby diaper brand, you know, only with people who have kids in that age group? Right? I think it's a, it's a big shift for us to make, and that's helped us essentially do a lot more with a lot less investment, right? So it's not about cutting investments or it's not about pulling back money or, or, or saving on costs. It's really about making investments work harder and, and using common sense to arrive at some of these simple things that now look intuitive, but five years ago, we didn't even think that this was possible for us to do. Right? So that's one example of, of what we feel very, very proud of on putting the consumer at the center and leveraging technology to essentially make um, business outcomes better um, with the consumer in mind. The other example I want to talk about is another brand that we have, which is a very similar one, uh, which you know, I've also had the opportunity to work on, which is uh, Ambipure uh, Room Fresheners and Car Fresheners. Right? It's, a, it's a smaller business, but it's a very, very interesting and high potential business. Um, here again, right, I think we use the term, uh, all, all uh, digital brand builders or digital marketers use the term, you know, the era of spray and pray is no longer, you know, is, is all behind us. We need to go target it and all of that, right? I think uh, this brand was truly a brand where you sprayed, you know, uh, all over the room or all, all around the car. Um, again, it took us a very simple question of, if we sell a car freshener, should we not know if the person receiving the piece of advertising owns a car or not, right? That's a very, very basic 
question that we need to ask. It sounds intuitive again today, but again, a few years ago, we were saying, oh, we need to reach male consumers in top metros in the 25 to 40 age group or whatever it is, right? And again, the data came back and told us that less than 30% of these people own the car, right? And that's a massive waste of media investment. It's the wrong product to be talking to these consumers about. And therefore, again, now leveraging technology, first party data, and our technology partners, we're able to move that number from a 30% hit rate to about an 85% hit rate. So I know that when I'm talking about a car freshener, the consumer who's viewing that advertising actually has a car and actually owns a car, right? That huge change in the way we operate brand building. But again, I think a good example of making technology work with the business question at the center, with the consumer at the center. Now, again, I, and I believe that this is a trend that you know, um, we need to continue to be careful about on making sure that the decisions are made with consumers at the center and consumer questions and consumer logic at the center. It's very, very easy, I feel, uh, to get seduced by the technology possibilities out there, um, that there could be a lot of nice to do and, and, and kind of um, a fancy so-called things that we could be working on, but it's important to keep the consumer at the center on this one. The third one is a, is a more recent example. Right? I had a chance to visit a few villages you know, up in upcountry Uttar Pradesh um, uh, as recently as two weeks back. And it's mind-blowing when you see it you know, with your own eyes how digital has really, really transformed the way consumers live um, in, uh, in rural India as we speak today. All right? uh, the numbers are there for you to, for you to, for you to, for you to read. But what I'm interested in is the, is the pictures that you see on the right. These are actually phones of consumers in rural India that I had a chance to just have a look at as I was talking to them about their daily lives and their media consumption behaviors and so on. A consumer spend anywhere between four to five hours per day on their phones. Um, it's crazy when you think about it. You know, this, would, this would be you know, nowhere near the reality you know, five, six years ago. And it's mind blowing what that has done to digital, right? Out of, 15 consumers I met, you know, three of them had a television at home, right? Every single one that I met had a phone. And, and, and these are the kind of apps that they, you see on consumers' phones um, in rural India as we speak today, right? I mean, even Netflix is there, right? My wife is thrilled, but, you know, even the most expensive of apps is sitting there on phones uh, uh, in rural India. And that, therefore, obviously has changed the way we approach brand building um, with the rural consumer. Um, earlier, rural consumers were always um, kind of uh, treated as, I design everything for, uh, for urban India, I put it on the TV, and TV spills over into rural India as well, and then kind of I get a lot of reach, and it's efficient, and I reach the rural consumer. I think this kind of is thought-provoking because it puts a lot of questions in our head on how do you start designing for the rural consumer, how do you start you know, um, reaching that rural consumer specifically um, via digital, via mobile, which is where they're spending more time versus spending on TV and gives rise to a new paradigm of brand building that's possible now uh, because technology allows us to do that, right? What we've done is obviously, you know, working with all of these partners to try and reach the rural consumer with the right messaging, um, leveraging technology. What we also try to do on a few of our brands is one other extremely important stakeholder for the rural consumer, which is the shopkeeper in that village, right? So what we're trying to do, and we're learning on this one, and all of us learn, along the way. Um, we're trying to basically try and drive conversations um, at the store between the consumer and the shopkeeper. You know, that could eventually lead to conversion and trial for Procter & Gamble products across categories. And we're seeing some early encouraging signs on what this has allowed us to do as well. All right? um, and this is leveraging simple phones, simple conversations, you know, calls between the retailer and consumer and all of those. Um, but exciting possibilities, as I said, um, which technology has made possible uh, for us. What I want to leave um, uh, as I go forward on this one is a few thought starters on how we see technology really helping us as we go forward on this journey. A few things that we are keen to learn more on and, and pilot and learn our way through would be one around hyperlocal. Right now, we keep saying Mumbai is a you know, pot boiler of cultures and it's cosmopolitan and, you know, so many different, you know, uh, people coexist in the, in the city and so on. So it's obviously time to start asking questions on uh, does everybody in Mumbai um, re uh, uh, receive the same advertising? Does, you know, the, the consumer in Bandra, should they be looking at different advertising versus the consumer in Andheri versus the consumer in I don't know wherever? 
So those are questions that I think are problems that I think are logical next steps on this journey of personalization. You know, one per, one, well, I do want to leave one pet peeve on this one on, on, on personalization, right? I'm a Tamil guy who, who, who grew up in Chennai and I can, I, I, I can speak Hindi a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in Tamil and, and English. I see Marathi advertising all the time on YouTube when I open YouTube here in Mumbai, right? Um, and it's just mind-blowing that, you know, where we are and having, having been through decades of, of learning and growing, I still see, you know, advertising in a language that I don't really know. Um, and those are, I think, questions that all of us should sort of push for to say, how can we essentially target and um, reach consumers in, in, in a ways that they are more comfortable with. Right? The other one on, on personalization is really also about reaching consumers, again, leveraging what we know about that consumer. So um, on a room freshener product, there could be many different reasons why your house is not smelling great. Right? Maybe um, uh, you have a pet at home and you know, the pets come with their um, uh, the things that they do at home. So do you have different communication for different cohorts of consumers, all under a big brand idea to the point of brand building, one big idea but essentially targeting different consumers in different ways um, is another one that I think would be very, very useful and important going forward for us as brand builders. And the last one on, on my asks is uh, as many technology partners you know, come to us and, and offer solutions to us uh, as PNG, my ask would be to really look at the problems to be solved as business problems you know, um, versus, you know, to put technology ahead of, of the business problem to be solved, right? Um, I look at, at least, you know, in my simple mind, I look at the op opportunities as either we try and reach more consumers or reach new consumers. We try and drive significantly stronger effectiveness with consumers in terms of outcomes, in terms of brand recall, in terms of conversions, whatever be the measures, or we try and get significantly more efficient in how we spend our money, right? It's one of these three that will really make a big difference in brand building outcomes for us, right? So how can we start with that construct and then approach uh, uh, later on into how technology helps us solve for these problems, right? So that would be my ask to all technology partners out there on how you can make yourself significantly faster and move faster in the PNG the world. And I'm not representing PNG, I'm probably speaking for all um, brand building organizations as I, as I say this. Uh, I just want to leave um, with a couple of you know, examples on how technology has helped us as PNG serve the communities that we live in as well. At PNG, we believe that it's our responsibility to be a force for good. Uh, and we believe that as we drive more growth, we are also able to translate that into, driving more, into doing more good for the communities that we live in. And the two examples that I share here are you know, both things that I've been a part of and I've had a privilege to work on and I'm really, really proud of. One is our program that we've been running for close to 20 years called PNG Shiksha, which is about education for the underprivileged. And the other program is a program on our sanitary napkins brand, Whisper, which again takes you know, uh, our mission of keeping girls in school you know, to the forefront. And these are examples of how we've leveraged technology over the past few years to make these programs even stronger and, and reach a wider base of consumers. So I'll just play you a couple of videos. I'm not going to spend too much time talking this, but over to the videos. I think we need audio on these uh, videos, so if you can. Yeah, just to give you guys a quick snapshot of the work that we do on, um, on Shiksha. Uh, Shiksha is a program that we've been running for about 17, 18 years uh, here at PNG India. Uh, we reach, uh, we, we've sort of evolved the program over time. You know, we've built about 2,300 schools um, in the country, um, impacted more than 3.2 million kids in the last 17 to 18 years that we've been doing this. 
Recently, we basically shifted a little bit of our focus to improving learning outcomes uh, because we realized that there may be a school, but the quality of teaching, the quality of infrastructure in the schools, all of these are factors that are going into making the learning outcomes optimal for students. And therefore, we've been moving and evolving this program over time. And uh, if the audio uh, works, um, you can also watch a short video on how technology is Wonderful. Uh, before we move to the second one, just to close out on how technology helped us on this one, right? As we know, you know, we had schools closing um, far and wide during the pandemic, and all of us were, in some ways, learning the ways of, you know, working from home in the comforts of our home and getting used to, you know, uh, shirts and shorts and all of that stuff. Uh, there was obviously a large set of, you know, students in the country uh, for whom nothing much changed. Um, there was a lot, uh, a lot of students in the country. Uh, who did not have access to education, and when schools closed, you know, they were really falling behind on learning outcomes. What we were able to do is to take the school to their phones, you know, partner with various institutions, we were able to take schools to their phones and continue their education. And now, as we partner with more schools, when kids are back to school, I think education continues. Right? So that was the example on Chiksha. I want to share with you the, a similar example on, on, on Whisper, if you can play the video, please. यूनिफॉर्म में नहीं पर रोज क्लास अटेंड करती हूँ टीचर अटेंडेंस नहीं लेती लेकिन मैं ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट होती हूँ यहाँ कोई ब्लैक बोर्ड नहीं है पर मेरी क्लास चालू है मैथ्स साइंस इंग्लिश सबका रूटीन बारी बारी है बिना टाइम टेबल के खूब करते हम तैयारी है स्कूल्स बंद हुए तो क्या हुआ पढ़ाई लिखाई तो जारी है क्योंकि हमारे पास है मोबाइल शाला मोबाइल शाला विस्पर के कीप गर्ल्स इन स्कूल मिशन की नई पहल है जहां मोबाइल फोन के जरिए लड़कियां अपनी पढ़ाई जारी रख सकती हैं बिना किसी फीस के आज ही www.keepgirlsinschoolindia.org पे जाएं स्कूल सब्जेक्ट्स और पीरियड्स के बारे में सारी जानकारी अपनी बच्ची को दिलवाएं विस्पर मोबाइल शाला अब बच्चे स्कूल नहीं जा सकते तो क्या हुआ स्कूल तो उनके पास आ सकता है here again, just to give a snapshot on this program, um, I'm sure many of the women in the room uh, would probably have gone through a Whisper program back in your school, you know, when you, were, when you were young. We've been doing this for over 20, 25 years in the country, and, you know, it's always been extremely humbling and rewarding um, for us as we expanded this program. We now reach millions and millions of girls uh, in the country. Uh, again, during the pandemic when, you know, schools shut, and schools went online, we were able to quickly move this program online as well so that menstrual education was continued to be given to girls all across the country. And you know, we've received only the best feedback from, from the school authorities, from parents, from the kids um, on how this has been useful um, for them as they kind of uh, also waded through the pandemic. So these are a couple of examples where I am deeply grateful and thankful to all our technology partners uh, who were able to help us you know, keep and raise the bar on, on brand building, raise the bar on serving, back, uh, serving the communities that we live in as well. So a big thank you to all our, uh, all our technology partners on that. I just close with my last slide. Um, this is something that you know, we love keep, you know, saying over and over again at PNG, uh, but we do believe in this truly that the consumer is our boss. Um, and you know, every decision made with the consumer in the center helps us make better decisions on the business and helps us win um, as we go. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here today uh, to the entire Exchange for Media team. And also thank you to everybody who's listening in. It's been a great pleasure.